See, impeccable we are timing. Live. Okay, are you ready for this? I'll be taking a selfie. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like cheap, 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 cheap. This is the Tony Carson theme song. <laughs> so tonight is um, our 61st episode. I'm like, is it? yeah. I didn't accept that. This is hilarious. <laughs> There you go. I'm like your Ed McMahon. There you go. That was your big. I've intro. been asking for a band whole year and I didn't get. No. I get liver. That's He's what asking I got. for like a drum kit and everything. It's it's embarrassing. So I just you know wanted to throw the little guy a bone tonight. Um, oh, <laughs> anyhow, so it's Thursday night, 5:30. We are live in the kitchen at Well Seasoned. Welcome everybody. It's nice to have you here, Chef. Nice to have you here. How too. are you? I need a drink. Yes, we all do. I'm excellent. I'm excellent. I'm um, yeah. I'm good. I'm excited. I got my one of my favorite fish to cook with today. I got some mm -hmm. of my favorite people around. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Hope I don't mess anything up. This time. Uh, Whew, whew. It's a little nerve wracking, isn't it's it? It's not acting. Nice. So um, I've been cooking for forever. <laughs> we have some VIPs in the house tonight. Tonight's uh, cooking segment is being sponsored by our friends at uh, Wild Pacific Halibut. And um, I think that's a nice board. It's a beautiful board. It is a beautiful board. Um, so we are cooking with, I mean, one of the best pieces of fish imaginable that comes right out of the Pacific Ocean here in our backyard. It's wild. It's our, our fish farmers are, yeah, is that what they're called? Fish farmers? Harvesters. Farm Harvesters, thank you, are all local. And this fishery uh, supports a lot of families in our province and it's totally sustainable and the food is, the, the halibut is just spectacular. I don't know if you guys have ever been halibut fishing. I have not, it's on I my have list. Been. Yeah, I, I have been, it's, it's quite like, and the whole coastline is amazing. But you worked at a lodge uh, yeah, for a bit, right? That's, that's when I just uh, did a bunch of, well, actually I was working a lot. I didn't do a whole lot of fishing, but uh, halibut is one of my favorite pieces of fish. We're, we're, we're blessed here in Pacific Northwest. Sure. That we got we get like incredible fish all year round, uh, mostly. Uh, but especially there comes a uh, uh, late spring and early summer when that's when halibut really really starts to shine. Yeah, it runs now. The season's yeah. open through September, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah. If you can score a halibut around like at 15 to 20 pounds uh, in July, I would say, or mid to mid August, in in from open waters, there's there's nothing like it. Yeah, it, it's just uh, there are other uh, cousins of this. Heather, we might. Well, uh, just correct me if it's wrong, but the flatfish family. Um, I grew up with a similar one. It's a, it's called a turbot, in, in European, but it's it's so excessively expensive that you can't you can't just do a whole lot with it. Uh, but halibut is like the really nice and a meaty cousin, which which I love cooking. It's also a very lean piece of mish, uh, fish, uh, which is nice. Uh, you just got It's really it good for you. It's really yeah. It is it is wild wild food. Um, as as well as uh, it is a white fish, so it takes on all of the flavors yeah. and and we're from uh, pacific northwest we have all the cultures just uh, smashed into each other here so you can take this fish and go anywhere with it is that uh, a technical term just smashed together i don't know yeah. i feel hip tonight so <laughs> <laughs> you know, i don't know what's gonna happen uh but but uh yeah so um, so i we, we've uh, decided to do a bunch of different preparations tonight so that we can uh, show you a little bit of different cultures, which I do love. Uh, I do love enjoy cooking uh, ethnic food. I guess I can't call it ethnic on this coast. Well, it's every day's everybody food. Yeah, I mean it's sort of a bit of a melting pot, like you said, yeah. where all the cuisines sort of come together, and you end up with a really great mix of Indian, Asian, West Coast kind of, you know, vibe yeah. going on. But the halibut is really great for. A million of these applications Everything. yeah Fra so fried fish and chips if you've ever had sure. halibut up if you can afford it yeah uh, before before going to the fish, fish and, and chip chips shop. is a bit of a luxury with halibut but, it, but it's really hard to beat like a good piece of fried halibut um sea lovers fish and chips does uh halibut as an option on their menu and i love it it's it's totally worth the couple extra dollars it is phenomenal uh, I, but i, I don't know if you guys it. online had a chance to see um, the video, did you watch it? The video I posted with Heather and I. Yeah, I've seen um, it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, Heather uh, is Not our, good knife skills. Excellent Heather knife has skills. amazing <laughs> knife skills. Heather's got good skills in general. Heather is our fishmonger here in Langley. She owns One Fish, Two Fish. And she's here tonight just to make sure you don't screw up the fish she butchered. 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, man. So I don't know if you had a chance to watch uh, the video that Heather and I posted the other day where Heather is breaking down a whole fresh halibut. And she talks a little bit about um, how the fish ends up at her shop and, and the sustainability of it. And I did have the fish tag here, but it's missing. Oh, I just... Oh, did you get rid of it? I got rid of it. I oh, thought it was... Oh, my. I made Jenna, like, hang on to that fish tag all week so we could talk about it. So yeah, our fish, I just ruined that. So our fish that we're cooking with tonight <laughs> came with a little tag that I identified. Take the garbage if you want. <laughs> no, you don't need to go right through the garbage. I'm it was a little on. tag that identified the um, that uh, identified the origin and the number of the fish that relates back to the fishery itself. So you could um, the so the fishery can be tracked for sustainability and and if you're buying a, a, a whole halibut you need to make sure that it's got that tag on it because you'll know then that it was ethically harvested legally harvested and that it's wild from bc so did it have a name the halibut i don't yeah. know heather did you name the halibut oh, oh <laughs> you did what are we that, cooking that, that, tonight? That comes a Henry? Henry, oh my gosh, this is oh, looks Henry. Like, this looks like a tom to me. It's, it's, it's more of a tom, I'll tell you that. So if you get a chance <laughs> to watch the video, Heather and I, mostly Heather, broke down this whole halibut, and she broke it into steaks, fillets, and then she talked a little bit about the collar. So what I did was after Heather and I filmed that video, brought the whole fish back here for Dennis to deal with, and so he's cooked with each of the pieces of the halibut tonight and we'll talk a little bit about how he integrated all of those pieces into the menu tonight. Um, I actually used up all fish too. I'm, I'm not using the bones and the collar tonight because... Uh, but that would be make a really amazing stock. Yeah, yeah, all collar on its own, just it's roasted, just pick on the bones just a little bit and uh, with a little fresh bread or lettuce cups or whatever, it's, it's delicious. But um, we're not using the bones tonight because it's 40 degrees outside and I don't think you want, anyone wants broth or soup. You know? <laughs> Uh, or like a heavy cream sauce that you would turn into, but um, yeah, but I, I, I will walk you through the recipes and tell you what I've done. So I think Janice posted the recipes for you to follow along tonight. Um, there's four different recipes that Chef is making tonight, and the idea with all of these recipes is that you could turn them into uh, a board if you were having company and serve them all at once, if you were feeling ambitious and felt like, you know, getting a various parts of the halibut and preparing it for company. Um, you could certainly do that and make that some of these pieces ahead of time. But Heather at One Fish, Two Fish, and a lot of you don't live here in BC who are watching us, or some of you live on the island, so you don't have the access that we do, unfortunately for you, to Heather. Um, so you need to ask your fishmonger about buying BC wild halibut. Um, Heather has a big halibut sale every year and she literally breaks down um, thousands of fish. So you can order a whole halibut from Heather, pre-book it. She cuts it like, you s watch the video, man. She has killer knife skills. Which is a daunting task. It's like, a lot of work. I'm sure you're very used to it, but as a cook. For her, she's like a ninja. Like, boop, boop, yeah, I've, boop. I've seen the video. Yeah. Uh, uh, but like, as a, as a cook, when you're first assigned to this, they're like, all right, well, well, you always start with trout. Though. Nobody Here, gives you a halibut. Here, break down this fish for me. Yeah, it's only five hundred dollars, just so you know. <laughs> and I want perfect four ounce or five ounce. Yeah. Five, it's usually five five ounce. Don't sexy. waste anything. And somebody's watching you like a hawk right there. So it's just so after you after you make a lot of mistakes, not a lot, but the first fish is usually butchered. Yeah. And then the second I, one, hey. uh, you get yelled at, and uh, so you learn from it. Yeah, I've been there for sure. I've butchered some fish in my day and now I don't do that anymore because <laughs> I have a Heather. friend. Yeah. Uh, so Heather is on my speed dial and I can send Heather a text and say, hey Heather, can you shuck me some oysters? Can you bone out some You get your oysters pre shucked? I do. Yes. I have too luxurious for me. I can't I know. do that. I, I'm sorry, Heather doesn't want me to tell people that she does that. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. She doesn't do that. 300 uh, oyster bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you know your fishmonger, and you should, regardless of where you live, you should have a relationship with your butcher and your fish fishmonger so you can call them, maybe not send them a text on a like 10 o'clock hey, Wednesday night like I do. Yeah, I, um, I do have fish. But have a relationship with your fishmonger and talk to them about this, the fish and where they get it and make sure it's sustainable and make sure it's wild Pacific halibut when you're buying it because it is the best. So... Uh, our partner tonight, we have another friend in the house, our friend Lynette, who is like amazing. 
Um, Lynette dropped she off. She heard we were cooking um, BC yeah. halibut tonight, and so uh, Lynette dropped off some spectacular Pinot Gris from Kalala Vineyards. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I, I drink uh, dead wines numerous times a week, a day, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, their good two, This is their 218, and I'm gonna look it up in a while I'm on break and he's cooking. But Kalala just won some really big awards. This, I mean, you know here we hang out we cook every thursday night and we always have bc wine and we try and cook with as much local seasonal ingredients as possible and so spend the time figure out what the what the wine pairings are for the dish that you're going to prepare pinot gris is a really great versatile fresh white wine that's going to be spectacular with a lot of the applications that chef's doing for the salmon tonight so i'll come back and talk to you a little bit more about kalala but um, as usual, if you have questions while you were cooking, yeah. go ahead and type them into the comment bar. He's got a lot of work to do, so... Yeah, anyhow. I got assigned to four dishes tonight. Four dishes. So, um, start your stopwatches. Doug, start the timer. We've got work no, we to don't, we do. Don't need that. Just, just drink your wine, man. No, just, uh, <laughs> awesome. So, um, welcome to uh, Facebook Live on Thursdays. Well, we're, we're cooking with halibut if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, tonight, now this, these preparations are s totally out of the way. Normally, you should not be doing a whole lot to a beautiful piece of halibut, right? You just like put it in a pan with a little butter, oil, whatever it is. Just cook it on one side, not high heat because this is lean wild fish. Lean wild fish doesn't like high heat or any, any wild game uh, or game. Um, so I am going to show you what to do with the trims. Like you have four ounces of halibut and you have six friends coming over. Now that is kind of like, uh, what are we going to do with the little skirt that comes out of it? Or, or uh, what are you going to do with the, the meat on, that was left on the board or, or, or on the color or, or whatnot? So I will just show you little preparations. At the end, we are going to have a little uh, fillet style uh, dish too. But uh, first things first, um, I've been to East Coast many, many times. I'm quite... Uh, Familiar, this is a preparation from East Coast. Um, I'm assuming, because uh, that's the first time I had it there. Uh, it's like where they take, they have plenty of cod. They take a white fish and make like a white fish dip out of it. Uh, there is, it usually starts with a white fish for its neutral, uh, because it's a neutral taste. Uh, it's been flavored with uh, mayonnaise, sour cream. It could be mascarpone, it could be cream cheese, depends on the household. And then usually they would put little flakes of smoked haddock or smoked mackerel, I think. Uh, no, I think, I do know. That's what my, um, one of my friends used to do there. And this is our first preparation. And I will just grab a plate. Let me see. Okay. And what I have done is I took all the little trim on odd bits and ends, and I just literally bring a pot of boil, uh, water to a boil, uh, salted, not very salty, pleasantly salty, like soup salty. And then I literally just took all my halibut trim and just turned the heat off and, and, and just put there and wait, depending on your cuts, uh, anywhere between two minutes to five to six minutes if you have larger pieces, uh, or until it's like very, very softly flakes. Uh, not boiled or like fallen apart or not seized up or not raw also because you are just going to keep this around for a few days. And, and then what I have done is I took all the cooked meat, put in a, a little uh, mixer with a paddle attachment. Um, I didn't have smoked fish, but I use a little bit of smoked paprika, which is also in your recipes, the proportions are there. Uh, some capers, some dill pickles, because I, I like dill pickles, and then um, <laughs> little diced fennel for texture. He's a pickler. He I'm, I'm a pickler. I'm, I'm a professional pickler. I said that to a, uh, somebody at a dog park, and they got really weirded out. And I'm just like, what well, do you, you do? You can't I'm tell a... a random stranger you're a pickler. That's just yeah, weird. Yeah, she, she, she took off pretty fast. I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> OK, so that's, that's our first one. And uh, we are just going to add some crackers now with this dip, this white fish dip. It's really nice. It's kind of, um, you can do this with tuna, too. Um, uh, not the canned tuna. I mean. No, it's best with fresh wild halibut, period. Like it's yeah. it is, it, but with, with also poached albacore tuna, it's actually equally uh, nice. I don't eat canned uh, tuna after I moved to Pacific, Great Pacific Northwest because 
well, we got albacore coming out of everywhere. I mean, if I'm going to have tuna, I just spend the extra buck. Um, I love it, olive oil, uh, poaching olive oil and whatnot, but tonight we're doing halibut. Um, and then if you have salmon kicking around also, same thing. It, it, the same recipe works with most fish. Now we're just going to uh, pass this to our guests. To our guests. A few guests here. And uh, so they can just start snacking on it so you don't go like, you know, uh, only wine forward. And then so uh, we are going wasted. to move to our second preparation. Now the second preparation, which one should we do first? Let's do the croquette first. Uh, tonight, no sp uh, expenses spared. So uh, we're well, just going to make a little saffron mayonnaise. Uh, this is also a great recipe. This is one of my favorite things to make when I'm serving fish. Um, and it's an all-around great dip, but with halibut especially, or white fish, it really, really sings. It also is great uh, with your potatoes. So um, literally, there's not a whole lot of secret to this. There is a, a tablespoon of water in here. Crank your heat up all the way. And then what I'm going to do is take, uh, I would say, a few pinches of saffron uh, leaves. Now, when you're buying saffron, come to Well Season and buy the Spanish saffron. Um, there are different um, strengths of saffron and qualities of saffron, uh, the different uh, qu uh, varieties of saffron. Some of them are very cheap, but the cheaper they get, the less flavor you're going to get, ex uh, you're going to extract from them. And then simply, uh, you are going to grab your uh, favorite mayonnaise, uh, whichever it is, or make your mayonnaise. Um, for the, for the real heroes out there. And then once this is there, almost there is no uh, water left, we are going to add this uh, into our uh, uh, mayonnaise. And as it sits, the color will be, I'll, I'll show you the color. Making mayonnaise makes you a hero. Is that what you just said? Could we just, oh. maybe turn the microphone off, please. <laughs> Um, as you can see, the color is just as it sits. It is going to go more and more vibrant. You can give a little bit more. You're my that. hero, Dennis. Oh my God! How about a raise? No. <laughs> Did I get one? No. Oh. There's no raises tonight. You all have wine and halibut. Oh, we lost two croquettes. Stop talking. Ooh, man down. Man down. Let me get that for you, chef. Uh, yeah. Clean up on the aisle too. <laughs> so. Ten now, as you can see, my, as my saffron uh, poaches, it's going to turn into this, uh, they call it a saffron tea at the same time, at, at, at times. So bougie, all the saffron. Like, I know. There's no budget tonight. Uh, it's really not my problem. So, yeah, uh, obviously. Somebody always pays the bill. That's, that's the beauty of uh, cooking that here. And then what I've done is uh, I spared some of that meat that I have uh, poached my halibut in. So, sorry, that, from that flaked halibut. Let's add this to here. And then um, did a very, very simple mashed potato. Whatever your favorite is. Your favorite mash. Don't make it too, too wet. Nice, uh, not very stiff also. Uh, the softer your mashed potato is, it's going to be a little bit harder to work with. Will this work with leftover mashed potatoes? Absolutely. Yeah. It's actually a great, great, you. thank you. That was, that was the most useful thing you said. Oh, really? Uh, tonight. I'm uh, proud tonight. Well, it's the last one. So I hope we you're enjoying that one because it's your last glass, but whatever. Uh, have you seen my liquor cabinet? <laughs> Can I show you this for a second? Let's just stop for a second. I mean, look at that. Tequila? Uh -huh. oh, oh, yeah, actually, it belongs to somebody else now. <laughs> actually, technically, it's mine, so, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You do you, chef. Uh, anyway, and then we're going to take this uh, cooked halibut, fold it into the mashed potatoes, and um, what I do is after I fold it, I add a little bit of parmesan, sometimes an egg yolk in there, and then I take a cookie scoop, and uh, you can use it, uh, shape it by hand, you can pipe it and cut it, doesn't matter, and make little uh, mashed potato and halibut packs like this. Not a pack, sorry. For a a uh, 
Like a meatball, sort of. Like a little, like a little uh, ball of uh, bundle of joy. Um, not a bundle. Chef, would this recipe work with sweet potatoes? Or would the sweet potato, potato overpower uh, the halibut? No. No. Sweet potato starch is not... I mean, you can. Absolutely, you can. But uh, it, it would be... It will be way, way more harder to work with. Now, after I have this, uh, I put it in the freezer and uh, just to set it really, really nice so I can bread it and set up my breading station. Would you like to keep an eye on the croquettes in the oven? Uh, yeah, here's a probe. That's Chef T. Chef T. Wow. So Chef T, you're going to Chef T. Uh, and then we are going to set up our breading station. Actually, three eggs is too much. What I have here is just plain, good old plain flour. Couple of eggs. Tell me you can crack eggs with one hand. Um, and then what I have here also is coarse breadcrumbs, uh, Japanese style breadcrumbs called panko. Regular breadcrumbs work well also. Make sure that they're not very, very highly colored. And then I break my eggs down. Any questions? I usually say this to the camera. Well, <laughs> actually, um, it wasn't a question, but Stacy says, um, Heather, if you name it, you can't eat it. <laughs> so uh, Stacy, <laughs> Stacy's a big animal lover, and so she's concerned that you're naming the halibut. I feel like at Stacy's house, it would just be yeah, but halibut. halibut is not a cute animal. It, no, I mean, I see the beauty in it, but I'm Heather a might think a halibut is adorable. I love them. <laughs> Sorry, Stacy. Heather names her fish, so you can not name your fish at your house. It is different, though, hey? If you've ever been to a farm, like, they, they love their animals, but, hey, what do you want to have for lunch? Chicken. All right, she just grabs one and... <laughs> oh, it's Kevin's turn today. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Kev. What do you got, plans for the afternoon? Nope. It's Henry's turn today. <laughs> um, so... Uh, so these are frozen. First things first, what I want to do is just create a, a barrier because once things heat up, especially it goes into prior, uh, fryer, they will expand and push out moisture. So I have to be able to stop that. Sorry, so, did you say barrier? Is that what the... Barrier, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. What is the English for it? Barrier. barrier. Yeah. What did I say? Barrier? I don't know. Some weird, <laughs> some weird Turkish word. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, put the barrier on. Carry on, Barry on. Carry on, Barry on. <laughs> Henry. Um, and do this a uh, few at a time. When you bread things, especially if you're a professional cook and if you're doing 500 of these, which is good luck with that, um, you're going to have one dry hand and one wet hand. So the wet hands, because it's a high moisture product, grabs it from the plate, puts it in flour, and I'm going to shake this around until they're nicely coated in flour. Now comes your dry hand. Now if you take your wet hand and put it in the flour, you're going to have Hulk hands. Now in the middle of the process, you have to stop the whole thing. So which one was the wet hand? Your right hand is your wet hand. This is my wet hand. Okay. You have one job. Could you pay attention, please? <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll get to that. Oh, my God. Kathy says she had a cow named Christopher. It was hard to eat him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say around the table? Who is this? This is tasty. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's Christopher. Did you call him Chris, Kathy? Because I feel like when you give him like a shortened name, it's more difficult because then it's like more personal than just Christopher. Like okay. Chris? Thanks, Christopher. And rest in peace. Yeah. Um, my dry hand in, from the flour mixture is going to grab it. Now, after I put the flour on it, I'm just going to shake the excess off and I'm going to put it in a simple whipped eggs. What is this going to do uh, to our fritter is it's going to create a coagulant if any moisture breaks the flour barrier and tries to go out. Barry, sorry. Jesus tries to go out. How many do we Don't have? Don't worry left? about it. Don't fine. worry about it. I'm We're fine here. Fine. We're fine. Okay. I have band aids in the back. Yeah, see, Tom died for no reason now. Henry. I like Henry. to call him Tom. Hey! It's his middle name. <laughs> his middle name. <laughs> oh my god, now he has a middle name. Oh boy. Okay, so uh, what, the egg, what the flour is going to do is it's going to get egg to adhere. And if, again, if there is any mo uh, escape of moisture, 
um, it will coagulate because egg is a coagulant, it's a protein. Okay, from your wet batter, you're just going to use your wet hand and put it into panko. And then shake it around until it's nicely coated and comes dry hand again. So that's one. Well, I don't want you to watch me bread all these things here, so I'm just going to put these to the side and give a little rinse to my wet hand. And then we are going to set either a uh, two or three inch uh, deep uh, vegetable oil up to 350 or a deep little home style deep fryer like this to that same temperature and we are going to fry this about three to four minutes until it's golden brown and it is hot all through. The halibut inside there is cooked so you don't have to worry about the doneness. Uh, you can you can substitute raw halibut for this, uh, but then you really have to, um, it ha which has a lot of moisture, um, it will be a really explosive fritter. But it, it is doable. Explosive rhythm? I'm not sure I need fritter. those words I think words you should lay off the wine. Sentence. How about some in my glass? Can <laughs> I have some wine? No. Thank no. you. You're like, there's croquettes flying back here. You guys, you guys are drunk, that's maybe why. We should I, cut, fruit tray. I think we should cut Tessa off, why maybe. Are you? What's going on? What is happening I right now? I am so confused. You're, but, you're so like you, can take, uh, you can take three to four ounces of halibut, and you can just feed literally, how many are we here? Like eight, eight nine eight people? Eight or ten people. Eight yep. or ten people? Should I get a head count? No, we're good. Yeah. Um, and then, so just like a dear friend Tessa has been doing. Can these croquettes be made gluten-free? So you could use a... You could use, you could use cornstarch uh, instead of flour, and you can use uh, gluten-free uh, breadcrumbs. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? So if you can't access panko, a traditional breadcrumb would also work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, as you can see, like a little dollop of mayonnaise, our saffron mayonnaise, bright as the sun. And two, two little fritters. Uh, we had originally three for this, didn't we? Yeah, not anymore. Don't worry about it. Uh, the lazy has been dropping uh, croquettes uh, like no, there's no tomorrow. It's my fault. I may have third degree burns on my ankles, You're but whatever. You're still why? <laughs> Dude, don't worry about it. You just drank it all. For you. Yeah. Obviously. That sounds like high school on that corner. So that's our second dish. Let's just pass it around and see uh, what our guests think. I don't like garnish too much, if, if you've known me, uh, I'm a, I'm a uh, no garnish oh person. God. Just, you got a very nicely made product. I'm nice gonna, little dip. I'm going to eat the floor croquettes, so. <laughs> well, you have the five second rule over there. <laughs> <laughs> how, was, how was the dip, uh, the fish dip? Delicious. Awesome. Is it so, the, yeah. we did have a question uh, about the fish, the spice in it. it comes from Espelet. And if you can't access Espelet, which you can order on the Well Season website, can you? Uh, you can. It is very expensive. It I is expensive. Say. But, but um, Espelet is a pepper from Spain. Uh, it, is, it is quite costly, but it's used for its uh, aroma and flavor rather than in its hotness. If you can't find Espelette, come to uh, well, order from uh, Well Seasoned. Obviously, we carry it. So it's a specific pepper that is dried and um, used in this dish. Yes, but if you don't have it, just use cayenne a little bit just for warmness and uh, maybe amp the uh, smoked paprika a little bit and it would work. We can take that out, can we? Yeah. Thanks, man. Somebody's, somebody's paying attention. There's, there's that peanut gallery going in that corner. Yeah, just, just get it out of that. Now, Sorry, this was Chef, one more question just about the croquettes. If you're having guests, you can make the croquettes ad in advance and then fry them to order, like when you serve it, but you can't... Yeah, you what, what I did today, because we are 10 people and I don't right. want to fry croquettes. But don't fr fry them ahead of time. They won't... Like you want to eat them hot. You want to eat them hot. You don't want to serve them explosive hot, first things first. If you're, if you're at a wedding and if you just send it right <laughs> out of the fryer to the bride, oh. uh, you deserve to get punished for Melanie that. Like but, um, but yeah, what you can do is you can bread them. You can fry them in batches, put them on a, a little rack with uh, 
uh, baking sheet or wh whatever you have on a rack and pop it in the oven 30 at once and so you can just uh, uh, feed your friends and spend the time with your friends rather than slaving away. Or if you have a large island like this, just wrap them around and uh, pour everybody a drink and fry croquettes on it. That's, that's totally Sorry, cool. one more question. How long can you hold them in the oven once they've been fried? Like. Um, until they're not burnt and warmed through, uh, probably. I mean, depends on the oven. But, I mean, if you're having a party. I would say 400 Fahrenheit. Like uh, 20 minutes or so? No, no, no. no, no, no How no, long? No, no you, ha you have one shot to warm them through. You can't just put them in the oven and let them chill out there at 250. I would say 350. Uh, from frozen, you cry to uh, golden brown, and 350, five minutes. Okay. That's tops. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now, next one is a personal favorite of mine, one of my personal favorites. Heather, how's he doing? Oh, That's killing good. it. Thanks, Heather. I'll you. Sandra, Sandra, you're the halibut expert. I'll take how's two doing? Good. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I, I have a mini kitchen. <laughs> wow, you're getting thumbs up from the ladies tonight, chef. Oh, my story, good night story for you. of my life. No, I can guarantee you that is not the story of your life, but, you know. What do you know what I do after I leave Enjoy it when you can get it. Like, <laughs> maybe it's, it's a big party. I just get on the sky train and everything lights up. And party on, Garth. Yeah. So anyway, so this one is also um, another favorite of mine because of its snackability. It's a spring roll. So again, we just took uh, some of that poached meat, put that we put to the side. That can, You can just like uh, keep them in liters like this in your fridge. And then you have half a cabbage, one carrot, a uh, little knob of ginger and garlic, and half a chili. You got five friends coming over. What are you going to do? You're going to make spring rolls. What? <laughs> How did you guess that? That was an educated guess. Anyway, and, uh, and then the beauty of the spring rolls is the hardest part is to make the wrappers. Now, I made these this morning. I'm kidding. I didn't. Uh, because uh, just such wonderful wrappers are available these may have been on everywhere, the literally, because it's such a fun item to eat, uh, even in different forms and shapes, like egg rolls and this and that, in your frozen aisle. Just go grab a pack, and you know what? While you're doing it, just don't make uh, 15 of them for dinner. Make maybe like 60 of them. Put them in the freezer on a baking sheet. That's what my mom used to do. And then uh, once they're frozen, chug them in a Ziploc bag. And you can cook them from frozen. And uh, when you come home or when you're late night, you need a snack, start the deep fryer, obviously, right? And then... Uh, I think this is why people have children, so they can roll spring rolls and not complain about it. <laughs> what, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> so it's a good thing for your kids to do. You just it is, it is a great rolls. activity. If, if yeah. any dough-related shaping activity, it being <laughs> pasta, rolling spring rolls, pinching wontons, is a great party starter in a kitchen. Um, it's a good activity. You can pretend it's like summer camp for your kids, and it's look, kids, we're going to spring roll rolling camp well, today. Well, my child has paws, so he's not very capable of it, <laughs> Louis and, and an IQ of a lamp post. Obviously. Louis doesn't have thumbs; he can't roll spring rolls. Yeah, it'd be weird for him. But to real just... children could roll some halibut spring rolls. <laughs> yeah, put children to work. They need a job, right? <laughs> Heather has children. Sandra's children are oh, I know too old to, to fall for that they? now. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, maybe chug the spring rolls in. Rock stuff. So, um, and then what I do is I take a little uh, cornstarch and water, mix them together, because you want a little bit of uh, glue at the end. Now, if you made fresh pastry, you wouldn't uh, deal with this, but I've never met anybody that made spring roll wrappers because there are wonderful factories. And also, wheat starch uh, just freezes exceptionally well. So, uh, which that's what we say in the kitchens. Pastry chef's best friend is a freezer. It, it's Pastries work from frozen actually really, really well. So and many things work from frozen if they're properly handled to begin with. So, like you yeah. said, if they're frozen IQF, like on a tray, then you can freeze the spring rolls in a Ziploc bag and cook them later. It's just mm -hmm. about planning how you're going to freeze things. So much stuff works really well from so frozen. So many activities. So many. Um, and then what I've done is I had all these mishmash, I mean, not for this, but you have, let's say, cabbage, carrot, uh, serrano, uh, ginger, garlic. 
and I cook the moisture out of the vegetables. One thing you do not want to do is uh, put high moisture items in a spread, like, like a very, very tender sheet like this. Uh, again, once it hits the fryer, that moisture is going to push out. And next thing you know, you'll have a pool of uh, filling just been frying in your fryer freely. So to avoid that, there are two things we do. We just cook the uh, moisture out of the vegetables until they're dry. And then I cool it down, fold in my cilantro and fold in my halibut, cooked halibut. And I have this wonderful filling. Okay. And then I'm just going to take... Also, don't overstuff your uh, spring rolls. It's, it's again, uh, another way of uh, having explosive sp spring rolls. So, Chef, if you pulled the meat off the halibut collar, if yeah. you, like, uh, Which is this. poach it or roast it, what would you do to pull the meat off the collar? I would use my hands. No, but how would you cook the collar first before you take the meat off? Would you poach it? Well, if I have it... I would poach it because you're going to repurpose this if, if you're using heat. So it is a very lean meat. The gentler you can poach it and just like um, melt that little connective tissue between those plates as gentle as possible, your fish will uh, keep its tenderness. Right. And that's, that's, that's very, very important because uh, um, as you know, Heather would know that there's nothing more sad than a uh, seized up piece of fish. Right. It's just, it's, I mean... That uh, animal died for no reason, which is a sin. But this, both this spring roll recipe and the croquette recipe are really a great way to sort of economize with halibut. You can entertain, not yeah, spend four, a fortune. Yeah, four ounces, four ounces or yeah. six ounces of protein would go to t up to ten people. And then you can tell everybody you're making halibut spring rolls, and you've got this beautiful fresh fish, but you haven't, you know, broken the bank. Keep to the fillets to myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a Obviously. nice way to entertain with fish yeah. that, and make it sort of extend it. Absolutely. Uh, my cornstarch slurry is going to go on the tip. Obviously, don't be like that and just like put a big dollop. Just the tip. Just the tip. Anyway, let's just fix this. doesn't matter how experienced you are. You always make mistakes as well. Um, there are two ways of uh, doing this. Either... You can just go with the triangle and fold the sides, okay? And then you roll this. Don't press it. Don't just like, ah. Just, just gently and slowly manipulate it into a round shape. Light hands are very important in a kitchen. Light hands are your best friends in a kitchen. Or you can just uh, pre-do the sides. Obviously, I've been rolling quite a while time now. Obviously, Chef has some experience <laughs> rolling things. Yeah, uh, I do. I am not going to lie to you. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> I think all North America knows it by default. <laughs> <laughs> well, we certainly know it locally. Oh, do we? <laughs> all right, let's keep the PG content. And then, it's from legal. this... Uh, Halibut you can, is legal, Chef. Halibut is legal? Is that what you <laughs> no wonder I have a drinking problem here on this show. <laughs> like, this, is, this is like weekly trauma, just, just haunts me for the rest of the week. By Wednesday, I rebound, and then it happens all over again. Oh my god, where's my you, violin right now? Maybe it's in like uh, Port Cookit, maybe you should go check it out. <laughs> and now you can freeze this on a piece of uh, tray, and then. Um, piece of um, I, I also encourage you to cook these from frozen because once this, these are frozen, they're actually way more hardier uh, because by the time the temperature reaches inside, the outside is nicely crusted. So if your like, vegetables are a little bit wet, your halibut has a little bit of moisture and you cook them from fresh, they might explode, but you know, you'll figure it out. It's all good. There's <laughs> no mushrooms in there, right? No, but there um, can be. Yeah, you could certainly add some mushrooms and... Uh, Goes in there. What are some other veg options in that spring roll, Chef? Anything and everything that you like. Uh, as long as it's cooked out of its moisture. Especially mushrooms have, are very, very high in moisture. So you cook that down in a saute pan just until it was nice and dry. You just use a spatula. You pull your vegetables to the side. And if there's a pool of oil or soy sauce... Not oil, sorry. Uh, moisture... Whoa, it's so loud all of a sudden. So, so you're the only thing that's loud right now. The temperature reaches okay. inside, the outside. Is so, um, 
So that's that. This is one of my also favorite dipping sauces to make. It is very, very easy. You just get a whisk and a bowl. And I just, you, and this sauce is indestructible, so just make liters out of it. It dress your salads. It's great for your stir fries. It's a nok chum dressing. Uh, fish sauce, commonly available. It hit the Costco, so you can just, um, and the good brand is in Costco. The good uh, what? Fish sauce. Oh, sorry. It's called Costco. Um, and then I have rice wine vinegar and a little serrano chilies. If you're not a spicy person, that's just for accent, not for really warmness. Um, just skip the chilies. White sugar. Thanks for not using the sweet chili sauce tonight, chef. It's like, I feel like that sauce gets so overused everywhere. That's a, that, that's a very uh, Canadian move though, man. I, is I don't it? Know. I think so. It, it's in every single pub. It is. Like the chicken fingers and this and that, or like the wings and this and that. But people love they that love sweet flavor chili sauce. profile of uh, Thai cuisine of just like sweet, sav like, just like sweet, savory, salty, sweet, spicy. Yeah. yeah. And to this, I am going to take my... Uh, just ready. Wrong way. Zesta. Add a lime, lime zest to this. I almost took a chunk. I don't cut myself with knives anymore. I'm not cut or anything, but... Tess is making up for you, chef. <laughs> Tess has cut herself every day since she started working here. I've myself twice. I suggest you bring your glasses, Tessa. Then I am going to grab my little elbow here. Cut. Also, roll your citrus out if you can, please. It'll ease up the juices. Cut into it. Then we are going to go add the lime juice. Add the lime juice. Now we have salty from fish sauce and that funky flavor, which we all do love. Uh, if you don't like fish sauce, you'll like Worcestershire. If you don't like Worcestershire, you might like anchovies. It's all the same accent. Then we're going to whisk this until the sugar is dissolved. Give it a little quick taste. It tastes like a million dollars. So you have the recipe in your kits which you can use to make this. I encourage you to do this in uh, liters and have it in your fridge. It's, it's a great, great condom. Now, not to... Um, and that'll keep sort of indefinitely in the fridge, right? Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's not going to go off. Right. Like you, you'll perish and they'll, he'll be fine in there. You'll die and there'll still be knock charm in your fridge. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the last course. One of my favorite things to do um, is to make summer slaws with the leftover vegetables in my fridge. Now, today I use the traditional ones because, I mean, we're not going to serve leftovers to our friends, which uh, purpose properly, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, what I have here is just cabbage, carrot, just a summertime vegetable, a handful of herbs, really, there's, it's, there's not a recipe to it. You can use bok choy for this. You can use um, red cabbage. You can use zucchini, like anything that has some texture would work. Any um, vegetable that's in your fridge. Again, comes uh, the Southern East uh, influence, fish sauce and lemon juice. So it breaks it down. Rather than salt, I'm going to use these condiments. I'm going to add this in. I'm even doing the dishes in bit. How do you like that? <laughs> so Chef Sarah's joining us tonight from Saskatchewan. And um, she agrees that the Thai chili sauce is just so generic, it just shows up everywhere. So, Sarah, I just wonder if you make your own sort of nok cham at home and um, what you might use as an alternative to the sweet Well, Thai. it had its time and place. There is no bad talk in our exes now. It's not, it's not the <laughs> nice thing to do. You know what I mean? You're comparing Thai chili sauce to your ex-wife right now? Is that whoa, what I just heard? Oh, nothing. I, I want nothing. I want nothing right now about that subject. That subject has been expired and put into the folder. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, next. No, Thai chili sauce. It it all uh, we we all ate it at some point. Thought that it was great. So. It still has a place at 3 a.m. Not in my fridge. It doesn't. <laughs> no, I, I I just took it out. Um. But I do do a lot of sweet and savory uh, sauces. So, 
my vegetables are nicely marinated. It's been tossed in lemon juice, and they are going to break down and start to release their liquid. How are the spring rolls? We're doing good. How are the spring rolls, Heather? Delicious. Sandra, ah. how are you doing? Oh, look at you winning. I've never met a spring roll tonight, that I didn't like Jeff. so far. Now, let's do uh, buns in the oven, bottom maybe. Get it going. Thanks for Tessa doing all the hard work. Yeah, Tessa's crushing she's, it tonight. Uh, she's uh, crushing it. And I also like other textures. Uh, you can use, you know what is great in slaws is everything spice, everything bagel spice, which you can come and buy from. Uh, everything bagel. Wow, look at you go. Yet. No, 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 not yet. Uh, but today I have nigella seeds and uh, toasted sesame seeds that's going to go in there. It's a really nice texture, you know, it's a crunchy slaw. But nigella the, seeds are onion seeds, so uh, people often think they're like a sesame seed in that um, no. dressing, but it's not the same. No, and uh, or you can substitute black sesame seeds or just roll with regular white sesame seeds. <clears throat> now, but, but do you toast the sesame seeds, chef, first? Depends uh, if, it, if they come toasted or not, but uh, if they're not toasted, I usually do. Now, we have to do a little bit of Southern East uh, in, uh, Asia's uh, preparation. What I have here is uh, gram masala. Gram masala is 40% cumin, 40% coriander, and 20% fennel seed, and that's my recipe. Every household has another recipe for this. Just a tablespoon, no, not even a tablespoon, I would say like seven, eight mils olive oil we're just going to get make a little wet rub out of this okay let's get our pan going chef people are loving the nok chom is, are they? is it nice yeah it's really good it's very fresh it's very light um, and let's just leave the top of mayonnaise for, for a second for, but for the acidity difference. works really well with the fried food so absolutely it's the vinegar and all of that stuff in yeah. there that's so great with the crispy spring roll absolutely now whenever you're seasoning things I always salt my protein separately because once you put an oil marinade on it the oil will be the barrier and you're not going to be able to penetrate the meat so all my rubs uh, oils and none of them has salt in it and I'm grabbing my lovely fillet here um, also it is smart to keep your fillets because fish is a high content item on paper towels so that and I usually like to leave them in the fridge for about two to three hours so the uh, the dry it dries out a little bit dry air just uh, really dry uh, dries outside of the fish and so you don't get stuck in your pan uh, they you say that they you know you just had to have like a really really hot pan not to get stuck that's not even close what you need to do have is a dry protein and a good amount of heat because uh, if you cook a wet piece of fish it'll almost boil in its own juices not right? even that it will create a vacuum effect with the moisture and it's just gonna stick to your pan Right. Anything wet that is, uh, is is going to stick to your pan. So, just like they told me in culinary, get your pan ripping hot. I mean, don't get your pan ripping hot. A wild game does not need any of that. So, this is the fillet piece of the halibut. Would this also, this application, could you do the same thing with the steak, the halibut steak? Yeah, why not? Why wouldn't you? Sure. Absolutely. And you should have a big halibut chop, maybe like a 50 pounder. A halibut chop? Like a tomahawk halibut. Tomahawk halibut. There you go. <laughs> there you, you will, go, you Heather. You will break internet, I swear. Uh, Heather, I'll be on your side. I feel like that's a challenge, Heather. Halibut tomahawk. Uh, I'm, I'm there for you, Heather. You I'll, I'll eat it. I'll, I'll cook it. <laughs> All right, so my fish is salted. Now salt is on the fish, and it started to permeate. And you're going to see like a light little sweating of the fish, which started to do its job. Now, from here... I'm gonna go. Fish is sweating, halibut, chef sweating. Everybody's I everybody's don't sweating. sweat, just so you people know. I'm uh, no, I don't. I don't. I move just slow enough to not to go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you you'll never see me in sweats or sweating. In sweats? No, I do not want to see you in sweats. All right, either. let's let's drop the moisture and. Uh, I encourage uh, you to use a uh, non-stick pan. We don't use them in the professional kitchens because they perish very fast. It's just for the egg station. But at home, it is a lifesaver. You know one of my favorite pans is those IKEA $16 pans? I know, you love those pans. But they're 
fantastic to cook fish with because they're like a thin metal. They go fast and slow very, very fast. Uh, it's like an F1 car. It picks up speed and it just drops down super fast. All you need to do is just... Uh, it's kind of like you. It just goes fast I am, and no, then... No, I'm, I'm, I'm more like an SUV. I'm built for comfort, <laughs> not for You're speed. like a minivan. <laughs> You're like a minivan. No, that's too, too family-ish for me. I'm not, I'm not. Uh, anyway, and as you can see, this lovely color. It's burst with flavor, and it's just going to pack. Just drop the thing. Uh, whenever you're putting uh, a high moisture item in a uh, pan, please be present. Don't be drunk. Don't be silly. Don't just pay attention to nothing else. Don't be Dennis. Don't be me. Don't be like me, please. And uh, come, be present at the moment. And I'm just going to touch the pan and lay it away from my side. Uh, safety is very important. And if you're making fun of safety, uh, touch away and gently go. And then what I do is I usually just shake the pan a little bit so the oil just goes under it uh, to make sure that I'm not getting stuck. So, Chef, your recipe says to marinate this for about two hours. What happens if you over marinate it? Uh, you can't over marinate it. Uh, because it's just going to get more and more flavors. It's so not a really, really heavy, you know, like fenugreek or sugar or anything. Huh? There's no salt in there to destroy it. Well, I, I, I salt them ahead of time. But there's not a... In not in the marinade. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So in and the also, uh, salting your fish is a good thing because it's going to tighten up the layers. Uh, you know when they cook salmon? It's always a great idea to just like put a little bit of salt and let it sit around half an hour so that you don't have that white albumin, right, coming out of it? The, the albumin? The, the, the white uh, it's coming the out of the salmon. the protein that rises to the top. Yeah. But it's when, just, you, uh, when you are marinating fish, if it's highly acidic or highly salted, you'll turn it into ceviche, right? Acid, I, I don't like uh, using acid in a fish marinade because it makes it really, really rubbery. And it won't marinate for long. No, it, it, just, it, it just turns into rubber. Right. Like any lean white fish, same with chicken breast. Um, Again, when you're dealing with wild fish, harsh heat is not ideal. So just put a nice little color on it, and I always cook my fish on the skin side. Even if I'm eating or peeling the skin off, it doesn't matter. It's a nice protection uh, from high heat. And I don't cook this fish on both sides. You just need slight color on one side so the, so the fish keeps its um, succulence and its sensuality, and it's, it's, it eats soft Whoa. and wonderful and lush as it. And um, to this is a halibut. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Chef, we just had a question about the actual marinade. So the marinade part isn't specified in the recipe. It says gram masala. Yeah. So what do you add to that? Is it just the seasoning? That's all you're adding just to it? Just salt, yeah. And gram masala is available everywhere. And um, So it, it's not a marinade. It's a dry marinade. It's not it's a wet not marinade, a marinade, I mean. Sorry. Uh, so it's a wet man. I, I don't know. Like so wet isn't moisture? A dry marinade is when you just use dry seasoning on the fish. A wet marinade is when it's like got, I don't know, drip, like it's got soy sauce or vinegar in the marinade. No, this is, this is a, dry a dry oil marinade. marinade. Yeah, Okay, thank marinade. you. That was the question. Now, I got my peaches. Uh, these are from uh, Okanagan. Not from Georgia. What? Nothing. Peaches. Never mind. Keep going. The, well, I, don't he know. Pretends I only listen to, to cool, Jimi Hendrix, so I, I don't know. Uh, there's a gentleman called Justin Bieber, apparently, it's so hot right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, um, and a hot pan. Uh, you might want to put a dash of maple syrup on this just for extra sweetness if it's a tart, uh, really tart peach, which happens every once in a while. In this context, just let's, um, I, wish, I would like to show you this texture of the slaw. All that uh, vegetables are right, really, really soft now. Their shoulders are down. They're marinated. They're getting rid of their excess liquid. Let's just uh, toss it around and taste it for seasoning. I deserve a raise. It's excellent. You do. I hope they give one to you at your next <laughs> job. Awesome. That's pretty good. I'm happy. There's something that. about a slaw. It doesn't matter what sort of kind of slaw, because you make like, a lot of them. Yeah, I, and I love these summer slaws, you know. They're just 
they're just a great way of utilizing vegetables. It makes them uh, really, really nice and flavorsome. But your Another. slaws typically are highly acidic, which works really well with the richness of the sam or the halibut because halibut is um, it's seafood well, I don't and want acid. I call it a neutral friends. fish because it takes on all these amazing flavors, but it's a super rich piece of fish. So yeah. a, a little piece of it goes quite a long way, but it works so well with a highly acidic. I'm gonna take a break while the lady talks. Um, slaw, <laughs> okay. Enjoy it, because that's all you're getting. You're welcome. Yeah, anyway, you're that's welcome. Just, yeah, that's just sitting, sitting in that corner. Um, a very hot pan, when you caramelize things. Is that ripping hot? No, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the peanut gallery is out of control tonight. Yep, you're welcome. A um, little oil. Uh, Chef Tessa, again, if you're entertaining more than, let's say, 10 people, Obviously, you can just like uh, pre-sear your fish, put them on the racks just like we've done, and then you can just pop them in the oven and finish cooking and spend that extra time with your guests. Um, Look, if you're entertaining more than 10 people, call Tessa, call us, we can help. Or I do private catering too. Just we'll, so bring you know. the, <laughs> we'll bring the hell of it to you. Just go to www.dennisworksear.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your fans only page? <laughs> I am not in the, ahead in the life that far. <laughs> oh, I think just uh, Jack crushing the party. Is that Jack's truck? Something is happening out there. Yeah. <laughs> is he coming in? All right, whenever you caramelize something, you put it in a pan and do not uh, touch it, please, so that it can actually do its job, especially if it's a high moisture item. Just press it down. I can already s uh, smell the, uh, the, the, the peaches. Uh, not caramelizing. Oh, you know what? While we're at it, since we're all sweet tooth, oh geez. Yeah, where is it? Do you want to get me a tablespoon of sugar? Yeah, here. Yeah. I'm pop this back in. I'm just gonna put a tad of sugar here, just a tad. So this one is going to make everything uh, slightly sweeter. Um, normally, I wouldn't go too, too much with the uh, fruit and uh, fruit and savory dishes by nature. I'm, I'm, I originate from Turkey. We just don't do that. Because you're bitter by nature. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I, I was very, very happy, but uh, <laughs> life happened. Uh, let's talk about this for a second. About what? The halibut? <laughs> uh, no. And... Uh, my peaches are uh, roasting. I'm using peaches for slight sweetness and kind of like that little um, chutney kind of uh, texture. It's going to be bound with a uh, little bit of mayonnaise, which I think I have a whole lot in here. Oh my gosh, Chef, is this a dip? Huh? Is this a dip? Dennis always makes fun of us um, in North America as we, we you dip things. You guys too saucy. <laughs> it is saucy. Everything comes with hummus and tzatziki here. And ranch dressing. <laughs> Or, 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 if you cook in <laughs> North America. Now, as you can see, I picked on... So oh, this recipe, you're using peaches, but obviously nectarines, plum, any sort of stone fruit would work really well here. Whatever in, in, in season and just right around you. Like, literally, Doug has a tree. Yeah, just go grab a peach and make a mayonnaise out of it. Yeah, or a little so our chutney. friend Doug brought us some peaches tonight. Are these Doug's peaches, Chef? No, I didn't have the oh. time to cut them up. I have an excuse why we're not using them. And that is called, I'm going to take him home. I stashed it back there so nobody <laughs> actually sees it. It becomes forgotten. And on the way out, <laughs> I'm going home. Again, there's not a whole lot to this. Just, uh, I think the fish is done, Chef, is it? Uh, I'm sure the pan is done. Whoa. Perfect, perfect. Also, pull your fish out a little bit early in that, then it's done. Sorry, I'm running out of time. Because um, there will be carryover cooking. Peaches goes into this bowl. That's a nice sound. I like that sound. Just the mayonnaise, just to bind it. I don't want it a... Uh, like a flavored mayo, but just to bind it, just like it as a little chutney. 
So you're adding um, the mayonnaise into the hot peaches, so it's going to kind of melt into that and make it a little saucier, right? No, it's quite liquidy, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Uh, but yeah, okay, chef. Your tray is almost there? No. It's out? Awesome. And then, uh, dear friend Tessa is going to uh, dress us. So, no questions? Um, can you plate the halibut slider on the... Yeah, uh, I will take one of them. Uh, I, actually, I'll take a couple of... Here, Tessa. I know I've been a pest all night. What do you want now? Okay, hold on. I got buns. I now. would love you to fa move a little bit faster, though. Oh, oh man. <laughs> okay, Good. <laughs> hmm. This is an interesting turn of events right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one working. This is where the kitchen team turns on chef. Is it? Uh huh. Team, pretty team sure. Is you're front of the house. You're not kitchen. You're not <laughs> back of the house. Right now, she's on my side. Oh. Um. It's it's called being a good old Canadian. It's called a passive aggr aggressive. Is there you're not even Canadian. You're like a passive aggressive Turk. I'm very straight uh, up up front. I'm, I'm very straightforward. Yeah, I'm, there's I'm no, not a there's I, I no a passive in your aggressive. No, just, you're just, just aggressive. It's your Turkish charm. I've been taught to be that way. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is um, weird. So halibut. Yeah. Well, what did we learn? So tonight? Um, we are doing the last uh, like as a uh, yeah, yeah 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 go go with it as as a sandwich. A slider, a little slider. It's, I don't know. Last time I bought these buns, Angie roasted me for, these are not slider <laughs> rolls. These are like dinner rolls. So I don't want to make a judgment on it. You're not committing to the slider factor? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what, is, what slides and what not. What I'm, doesn't. I think. Go, go, go. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. There you go, chef. Chef, do you make halibut at home? I, I do actually. I do. Uh, me and my puppy actually really enjoys halibut. So, what is your the your favorite preparation for halibut? What I usually like to do is a uh, roast a piece of halibut. Yeah. Um, in the oven. Yeah. In a pan or whatever I'm yeah. I'm roasting it in. And then uh, I would grab a tablespoon of mayonnaise with it because I think it's a great condiment for halibut. And then I would go to my backyard and pick some fresh salad leaves. Because I, uh, I, I, it just happens to be there. And then I just sit and uh, eat and feel like a million bucks. And I always open up a little bottle of wine as well. Just a little uh, one? Maybe two or three, but, but that depends on the night, if it's Friday or not. Um, I think you said it earlier. We are so lucky to live here on the West Coast and have access to this incredible fish. And... Um, uh, particularly in here in Langley, I have an exceptional fishmonger. Uh, my friend Heather and her business, uh, One Fish, Two Fish, they do really an amazing job. But it, regardless of where you live, um, I really would encourage you to make friends with your butcher, your fishmonger, um, my friend Rob Effingham Seafood in Edmonton. You can get fresh you halibut be on from this side. him. This is weird. Um, oh I, yeah, I can't do this. Um, so I would really encourage you, regardless of where you are, um, Sarah. I know you're joining us from Saskatchewan tonight, but I think you can have frozen halibut shipped to you. And halibut it, it freezes exceptionally yes. well. Just so, like with the freezing technology that we have right now. Yeah. It actually is as good as it's new. Heather, do you ship seafood from your location? You do? Oh my God, look at that, Heather. Uh, Sarah, you can order from Heather, no problem, and she can ship it to you right there in Swift Current. Um, Gladys, uh, you probably don't ship overseas, like to uh, the US? Um, Not so much. So Gladys, you're probably joining us tonight because I saw you sign in earlier. Gladys, when you're here visiting, because now the U.S. border is open, you can stock up on uh, Wild BC halibut and um, visit my friend Heather just down the street from my store, because I know you're going to stop in here because we're dying to see you. Um, and you can uh, pick up some fresh halibut from some fresh frozen halibut. Heather, when it's frozen, is it frozen at sea or are you vacuum sealing it and freezing it for your customers yeah, here? Okay. That's, that's a lot of, yeah. So it's cut and frozen basically to order, right? Um, so if you're buying a fresh halibut from Heather, um, you can specify the weight. So if you want like 
20 pounds, 40 pounds, you get a couple halibut um, and stock your freezer for the fall so, and winter. Yeah, yeah, just go for it. Buy 200 pounds. It's, yeah, it's, it's buy awesome. a couple just, halibut yeah. and um, have Heather um, cut them and vacuum seal them so you can keep them in your freezer so you have incredible fresh seafood all year. This was really good. This was a lot. This You're was welcome. an ambitious menu. <laughs> Your face. Um, this was an ambitious menu with four recipes tonight. We're really it, was, it wasn't my decision, by the way. Uh, no, it was my decision. <laughs> I'm yes. kidding. I'm kidding. It was. Uh, Finally, he's working for his <laughs> paycheck. Um, anyhow, we're really grateful to our friends at uh, Wild Pacific Halibut. Um, we're grateful to our fishermen, our fish harvesters. I'm sorry. What fish harvesters? <laughs> Why is this hard for me to say? Our fishermen. You might be drunk. That's, that's pretty Dude, much. Dude, this is my second glass of wine. Our fish harvesters, our fishermen. I'm kidding. I'm grateful for our coastal community that provides for all of us here in the province of British Columbia, and they ship this halibut literally worldwide. Sandra, yeah. So the uh, Wild Pacific halibut ships to China, Japan, everywhere across around the world. Um, so the whole world is enjoying the bounty of the West Coast, and I'm particularly grateful for our fishermen friends. You should eat more fish. If you, if you live yeah. on the West Coast, why wouldn't you eat more fish? Honestly. It's, it's um, also um, fish, good quality shellfish, is the most nutrient-dense thing with the awful meat, which is awful meat is, can be a challenge to eat. But yeah, more good quality shellfish, you don't need too much, four ounces, uh, three ounces. And, and you'll be set for the day. That's, that'll be a good... Uh, um, you don't want to deal with this guy on an empty glass. It's not fun. Um, that's it? Um, we got more wine in there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just we should, you should eat more fish. It's, it's yeah. excellent. Also, if you have it in the freezer, you don't feel like thawing it. Just uh, yeah, swing by the store. Just, Seriously, just, you don't feel like thawing it? It takes minutes. Drop a, your vacuum sealed package of halibut into a tub of cold water, yeah. run the tap. It takes literally a couple yeah. of minutes it, to It thaw. used to be one of the things that my, when my father would just would come back from work, uh, the fish mongers would work actually until like 8 p.m. so that people can buy fish on the way back to home. Right. And they just go and buy fresh and just go say hi to Heather, just grab a couple pieces of fish, come home, make a salad, open up a bottle of wine and a piece of bread. You're that's all you need, really. I think that's a big difference in North America where people shop for a week and then, you know, meal prep or plan for their Euro family Europe dinners. Day, day they today. shop daily, right? I mean, for fresh things, you shop daily. For sure. Yeah. Like seafood even, they'll shop daily. Yeah. But if you're buying frozen halibut that's vacuum sealed, you can literally drop it into a tub of cool water and it'll thaw in just a couple of minutes. It's so fast and so convenient. So I'd encourage you either to call Heather or, or your local fishmonger, buy a whole halibut, have it broken down into vacuum seal bags, and then you can try these, these recipes that Chef made tonight. <laughs> Find me at the Superstore parking lot. I got a bunch of halibut. <laughs> you guys want dolphin? I got oh dolphin. <laughs> boy, no. Do not buy things from the back of his car ever. Ever. So she has purchased it already. <laughs> <Bad experience. laughs> um, so uh, visit bcwildhalibut.com. Uh, thank you. Wildpacifichalibut.com. There's tons of great recipes on there. My friend, Chef Ned Bell, has some amazing recipes on there. How's Ned doing? Ned's doing great. <laughs> Ned's at the Naramata Inn Hi, in uh, Naramata, and he's, like, crushing it out there. I, I used to watch him cook like a pro or cook like a chef when I was... When I was a salad boy. Oh, back in he the was, day. He was still Ned Bell. He's just an update. Ned's amazing. So Ned has some fantastic recipes on the website. And now your recipes are going to be on the website. Oh, Watch out, Ned. up there with Chef Ned. <laughs> so maybe not, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, so thanks for this. I really appreciate yeah. the respect you have for the wild halibut. It should be respected and enjoyed in everybody's house this year. So thank you to our friends at Wild Pacific Halibut. Thank you, Heather, for joining us tonight. Thanks, everybody, for being here tonight. Thank you to Kalala Wines for this delicious Pinot Gris. It was a perfect accompaniment. Oh, bun down. It was the perfect accompaniment to our uh, halibut. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is the story of my life right now, that. <laughs> Um, so thanks for joining us tonight. We are on break now. We won't Am be. I? Can I? <laughs> You're Can not. I, I am. You're not. We're on break until the middle of September, and uh, we will be back shinier, faster, blonder.
taller. Um, She's way more prettier than I am. In September. Too. You guys didn't get to meet Chef Tessa. Come here. Chef Tessa did all of Chef's plating tonight and stuff. So Chef Tessa is new on our team. You'll learn all about Tessa tomorrow. So sign into our Facebook team. <laughs> well, look at you go. Like, I love it. I thought this was my moment to shine. This so is I'm your moment. Here. Oh, that's amazing. So I'll sign do the dishes, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to oh work. Oh, my God. Finally. Um, so sign into our Facebook page tomorrow. You can click the link for um, Wild, BC Wild Halibut. You can click the link for One Fish, Two Fish. You can certainly send us an email anytime at askachef.ca, askachef at wellseason.ca, and we will provide you the links to the halibut uh, website and to One Fish, Two Fish, or we will help you source a fishmonger where you live. So thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, you guys, for being part of our last class before the summer break, and we'll see you here um, middle of September. I heard that. It's come from the family. <laughs> it runs in the family. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you Cheers. next, uh, well, in a few weeks. Cheers. Cheers.